and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, there are a lot of jobs that are going to happen here in the next couple of months, and I know on our farm, one of those jobs is getting fertilizer placed with strip till. We'll talk about some of the considerations today. Well, another question that's on a lot of farmers' minds right now is when should I be buying my inputs going into 2018? We'll talk specifically about crop protection products on today's show. And we'll talk specifically about which of those products may help you control our Weed of the Week. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about eliminating the green bridge. What is that exactly? Some of the biggest fears that farmers have when they're trying to raise a crop is that it could be hit by insects or diseases or other problems. So when we talk about this green bridge, what we're talking about is on a field where we're going to plant a crop, we'd like to eliminate all the other green growth out there before our crop comes up. That way there aren't insects and diseases hanging out on plants that are already in the field that could impact our next crop. So certainly a bug or a disease could still be present in that ground or on that soil for a while after you've eliminated the green bridge. But in a lot of cases, if you just have one to preferably two weeks where there's absolutely nothing growing in that field, it gives the farmer a better chance to have fewer insects and fewer diseases. Well, it's kind of like teenagers. If you want to have teenagers out of your house, you have to eliminate their food source and they'll move somewhere else. Well, these bugs and diseases are not unlike teenagers that sometimes they're in places where we really don't want them to be. And so if we can just eliminate their food source, they don't have any reason to be in the field. So if you kill off uh, the plants that are out there that the bugs are feeding on, for example, if you give them a couple of weeks as that those plants dry up and die, now those bugs are gonna have to move on to another field. Now I know some farmers, when they talk about eliminating the green bridge, will also look for problem insects first. And if if they have an insecticide or, or something they can do to kill off those problem insects, that would be wonderful too. But many times just eliminating that food source is enough to get the bugs to leave. This is what we would call a cultural practice. In other words, we're not actually spraying the bugs or spraying the diseases. We are simply changing how we farm so the insects and the diseases hopefully go away. In order to do this, a farmer can use tillage, he can use herbicides. Uh, whatever the farmer decides to do, the point is he's got to make sure that he's got all green growth eliminated for a little while. That's called eliminating the green bridge. Well, one of the things the farmer may be trying to get out of his field is our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before.
Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump. Providing the ultimate protection, this wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Each year, Darren and I get a lot of questions about strip till. For many years, there was basically just conventional till, and then a lot of people started talking about no till. Well, strip till is kind of a hybrid of both. Well, there are many different things that go into strip till, and you may say, well, seed bed preparation is a big deal with strip till, and it is. Today, we wanted to choose just one aspect and one thing that we're getting done with that strip till machine. It's fertilizer placement. Now, I know not everybody that does strip tillage is placing fertilizer. But I think it's something that should be considered on most soils. On our farm, what we found is placing nutrients deep helps us out with many things, including drought tolerance. Well, one of the things we would encourage you to do before you ever start the process of looking at strip till, because we have a lot of people that say, well, boy, I'm interested in strip till. I hear I can cut my fertilizer rates and all these things. Look, first, do some soil testing. And what I'd really like you to do, at least in a few spots on your farm, you don't have to spend a zillion dollars to do this, but maybe sample zero to three inches, three to six inches, six to nine inches, and nine to 12 inches. And let's find out where your fertilizer's at. My assumption is most of your fertility's in the top three inches. So logically then, it would make a lot of sense if your fertility levels are high in the top three inches, they're low in the next three, and they're terrible in the next three, maybe we should be putting more fertilizer down deep. So we really like shank strip-till machines for use in the fall. And the reason why I say in the fall is because if you're gonna go out there in the spring, it's a lot of times too wet to use a shank and go down eight or 10 inches deep. But we like that eight or 10 inch deep placement for fertility on a lot of farms. I'm not saying on all farms, but on a lot of farms, because on most farms we find that the top three inches and maybe even the top six inches are already very fertile. So why not build up your soil just a little bit deeper, lead the roots down a little bit deeper. And now you've also made your crop a little more drought proof because there's obviously going to be more moisture in the soil most of the time down a little bit deeper as opposed to in the top three inches. Okay, so there's a couple different things you could do here. You could set up your strip-till rig to spread that fertilizer out a little bit at some point in the band. So like Brian said, maybe you say, my top six inches are really fertile, but my next six inches down are not. You could spread the fertility over the next six inches if you would like, and you set your strip-till rig up to do that. But I'm gonna make the argument for a concentrated band here for a minute. When you think about nutrients like phosphorus, what are we worried about with phosphorus fertilizer when we're placing it out in the soil? Many times we're worried about tie-up. Maybe it's high pH, maybe it's a high level of calcium. Uh, there, there could be a number of factors that could tie up phosphorus. And especially with this fall placement, it's a long time till we're going to need that phosphorus when you're growing a spring crop, for example, like corn. So with that phosphorus, by banding it, we can protect it a little bit more from tie up. That would be a good thing. The other thing with phosphorus is, think about how phosphorus gets into our root system. Most nutrients get in through mass flow, so they're moving in with water. Phosphorus is one that moves in through diffusion. So it moves from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. Now, if you're at an area of exceptionally low concentration, well, it may not matter that much if you're banding versus not, but if you're going for 300 bushel corn and you need it to be at a high concentration in that root zone, I suggest putting it in a high concentration would be a good way to get it into the plant. One other reason why banding often works well is because roots have no idea where fertility is at in the soil. But once they find a spot, then they put a whole bunch of other roots there. So they really proliferate right in that area. And what I'm getting at here is, boy, if we've placed the fertilizer down where we have virtually no compaction because we just did that strip-till process in the fall, and it's at eight or 10 inches deep, you're gonna have roots there probably in two to three weeks after planting. It's not gonna take very long maybe a month at the most. My point is the roots are gonna find it. Once they find it, 
then they're going to put a whole bunch more roots right there and you've got a much better chance for great recovery. As opposed to if you broadcast fertilizer, yes, your roots will find some of that this year, but some of it they might not find for five or ten years. So it just depends on if we're talking long term or short term. We find that strip till works a lot better for guys that say, look, I don't know if I'm going to farm the ground long term. I just want to get more of those nutrients taken up this year, more of the dollars I just spent, I want to utilize immediately in my very next crop. There are definitely some positives to doing things this way and placing nutrients in a concentrated band, but you have to be fussy about which nutrient it is. Uh, we've got some shortages in micronutrients in certain soils on our farm. Let's say that it's zinc that you're really short on out there and you say, man, I need to put several pounds of zinc out per acre. Well, putting that all in one concentrated band could make a spot that's so hot that you could actually damage some crop. So that could be a little bit risky. With micronutrients, a lot of times we'd prefer to see those spread out a little bit. That way our or, plants are taking lower doses in. Yeah, or used at lower rates. So there are nutrients like boron and sulfur, for example, that are leachable. Well, in those cases, it makes a lot of sense just to broadcast it over the soil surface, let moisture move it down. No big deal, we're not too worried about it. But when there's a nutrient like zinc that doesn't move in the soil, and you say, boy, I know I have to place it deep, Placing it deep in a concentrated band can be problematic if you're going with high rates. So just be a little bit careful with that. Otherwise, we do love strip till for fertility placement. We're just saying here, be a little careful with the rates on some of those micros. Hey, two other things that I do like about strip till and placing nutrients deep. We saw this in 2017 when things got dry in certain areas of the country, like in the Dakotas, for example, deep place nutrition was better because we still had some moisture down around that zone of fertility and our root system was down deep searching for moisture and plant food and we saw plants hold on quite a bit longer during the drought season and we've seen this in years past as well. 2012 was another great example of this. The other thing that I'd say is by putting those nutrients deep, if we ever have any surface erosion of soil, whether it's wind or rain, think about how fertile those top few inches are. If we can put our fertility down deeper, that's a good thing as well. Yeah, you've protected that fertilizer. You have less risk of losing your phosphorus, for example, and phosphorus is the number one water quality issue in the United States today. The last point that I've got is, We've talked about shank machines, and we'd like to place fertilizer deep, maybe eight or 10 inches deep in most cases. Well, a lot of people ask us about coulters. What do we think about coulters for strip till? Personally, I don't like them for fertility placement. Now, coulters are great for seedbed preparation. That's nice. But when we talk about placing fertilizer, I go back to what I started with today, which is test your top three inches, then your next three, and then your next three. I'm going to predict that on your farm, when you've got all those nutrients in the top three inches, why do you need a coulter machine putting a whole bunch more fertilizer in the top three inches? Use a shank machine, place them deeper. The other thing I'd say with the shank machine is you've got to use that in the fall in most areas because it's too wet in the spring. I mentioned that earlier, but that coulter machine, that could be used spring or fall. So it all depends on your situation, what you're trying to accomplish. My personal preference is you go with a shank machine, place the fertilizer deeper, but you certainly can use coulters as well. There are a lot of questions that we get every year about strip tillage and there are many reasons why people would do strip tillage. One of them that we focused on today was fertilizer placement in the fall. We like it deep in a concentrated band in many soils for the reasons that we outlined today, improving drought tolerance, improving the availability of that fertility for a long period of time and protecting it from erosion and getting into the wrong place in the environment. Well, whether you use strip till, no till or conventional till, you're probably going to face our weed of the week. We'll tell you how to control it coming up later in the show. Dealers, repair shops, and other ag parts resellers, this message is for you. Looking to save money on your parts purchases? Parts Express can help. We have over 3,000 popular items for tractors and combines priced at a level to save you and your customers money. In this tough ag economy, who wouldn't want to save on parts? Parts Express prides itself with old-fashioned service and easy-to-do business with environment. Go to parts-exp.com to see our parts offering and become a Parts Express dealer today. With wheat, greater access to N, P, and K means greater yield potential. Improve the availability of key nutrients for your winter wheat by putting Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant to work in your fields. Containing two powerful microbes, Quick Roots technology promotes early season vigor, improved stock strength, and ultimately, maximum yield potential for your wheat. Learn how you can put the power of nature to work at MonsantoBioAg.com slash QuickRoots. 
Take a look inside any rotary combine and you'll find single rotor technology. Technology Case IH introduced over 35 years ago with the Axial Flow Combine. But unless it gives you more bells and whistles with fewer belts and chains, more power using less fuel, it's not an Axial Flow. Because while the heart of every rotary combine beats red, only Case IH gives you the power to do more. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science. They know exactly what you want. They know how to make it happen. It's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, your orchard looks amazing. How is your season shaping up? Well, I'm using the starting lineup that my agroliquid coach suggested through my irrigation system. The trees have gained measurable girth. Everything's looking really good. I'm on track to get my fruit to the market a full week ahead of my neighbors. So you're feeling good about finishing up this season? Absolutely. Agroliquid is my championship team. Darren and I were growing up on the farm, it seemed like every farmer was purchasing his crop protection products and even his fertilizer, seed, everything. It was maybe the middle of the winter and a lot of stuff was purchased in the spring. Well today you find a lot of seed that's sold in the fall. You find a tremendous amount of fertilizer that's sold in the fall. And our topic today, crop protection products, is now a good time to buy your crop protection products. There are a lot sold right now. So we want to talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts of buying your crop protection products here in September. Let me give you just a few takeaways from our Ag PhD field day that we had this summer. I talked to so many growers from around the country that said, wow, I know I have to use a pre-emerge herbicide on all my acres next year to fight these resistant weeds and tough to control weeds that I've got, regardless of what trait package I plant in the field. I totally agree with them. I feel the same way on our farm, and I don't think we have a huge weed problem on our farm. We've been doing a good job controlling weeds for years, but I do know this, where we used a pre-emerge herbicide, weed control was easier all through the summer. So you know exactly how many acres that you're going to farm next year. I certainly think the pre-emerge herbicide, you know you're going to use. So when is the best time of year to buy it? When is it the cheapest and when are the deals? That's when I want to buy my pre's. Okay, is that going to happen right now? Probably not. Most of the pre's you can't buy now because they don't have the pricing out, they don't have the programs out. Here's the main reason why there are some deals in September. It's because of products like Roundup. Roundup, for example, is produced in certain plants 365 days out of the year, 24-7, 365. So what happens when it gets to fall and a lot of people stop using Roundup? Where does the Roundup go? Does Monsanto have enough storage for all the Roundup? No way. So it has to go out to dealers, and in some cases it has to go out to farmers. Well, in order for those things to happen, you know, for you or me, why would we buy a Roundup now? The only reason we'd buy a Roundup now is because it's cheap. So Monsanto has to incentivize you and me and the entire channel to buy it now. So those are the types of products that I would be looking at. And there are some bulk herbicides right now that are going to have pricing. There are very few package products. Like Darren's mentioning Pre's, I think about Authority. Am I going to be able to buy that in the fall? Probably not. No price, no program. Same thing with Metribuzin, same thing with the Yellows. There are a lot of these products you probably can't buy. But what we're getting at here is you want to at least be shopping around right now, find out if there are any deals. Because Roundup, for example, in September, if I compare September price to June price, uh, you know, in the spring, right when I need to spray it, on average, it's been a 25% savings by September, 25% over the last six or seven years. That's a big deal. All right, here's the thing. There are some considerations you have to have really anytime you buy product, but especially when you're buying it in the fall, you definitely need to be buying from a reputable dealer that you can trust because you're giving them money right now. And some of this product you may not use until spring. Like you talk about Roundup. If it's a great time to buy Roundup, well, I'm going to spray Roundup next May and June. Well, if you're going to buy it that far in advance, you have to make sure that your money is safe. So when you go to pick up product, it's going to be there. Now, speaking of that product, Let's just say you decide, you know what, I'm going to raise more Liberty Link acres next year, but I spent money early buying Roundup. You want to be able to exchange that for something that you actually want. So if you change your plans at some point during the year, you want to be able to switch product out and still get that early discount. 
a lot of these programs right now are actually take programs. Like I said, the companies are looking for storage space. They need you to take the product. Well, if you're going to take the product, make sure it's in a place that you're not going to damage it that you have a product that can freeze, otherwise if it can't freeze you have to keep that in heated storage, and that you have insurance on it on your farm. So just use a little bit of common sense there and it shouldn't be a big deal. We've worked with farmers over the years that have stored lots of product, they picked it up in the fall, used it the following spring, everything's just fine, but just take a few precautions, ask the right questions, and make sure you're getting the appropriate deal for your farm. Some of the fall crop protection products you may purchase could be to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it, coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. Take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Duo herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. need any identification tips for our Weed of the Week volunteer alfalfa. What we need is some control ideas. Yeah, so you might not think about this as a real weed, but you know what, if you're going to plant another crop next year, you want to get this controlled in the fall. We're not real big believers on leaving it until spring, taking a first cutting. You can do that if you want to, but in our part of the country, it really dries the soil out. So we do want to get it under control. The problem is there is Roundup Ready alfalfa and there is non-Roundup Ready alfalfa, but what if they're mixed? What if you aren't 100% sure? Well, then you probably better be on the safe side and lean away from Roundup, but Darren, you prefer Roundup if it's non-Roundup I like a high rate of Roundup if it's not How Roundup high? Ready alfalfa. I'd go at least two quarts but more likely even higher. I'd go with the highest labeled rate. Then if it's not conventional alfalfa, it is Roundup Ready alfalfa, I would use a very, very strong rate of 2,4-D. I really prefer the product Freelex because we've seen very little volatility out of that product compared to amines and esters. Yeah, otherwise dicamba would be great. A quart of, of uh, generic Clarity or Banvale would be awesome. Now, the other thing is you want to spray well before your first hard killing frost. Ideally, I'd like to be out there at least two weeks before the hard killing frost. So look at what your average date for frost is, spray a couple weeks before that, that's when you'll have the best control. After the frost, don't waste your money on Roundup, just go with the 2,4-D or dicamba. And real quickly here, in crop, if you happen to get it in corn, we really like dicamba, that's a very nice option. In conventional soybeans, we really don't have an option to take out alfalfa, so you really should plant Roundup Ready to extend soybeans so you can use dicamba. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week volunteer alfalfa, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Hey, I'm Lisa Kelly. You might know me from History's Ice Road Truckers, but this summer, I'm looking for a change of scenery. We'll be visiting Love's Travel Stops in search of people who, like Dello, are game changers. I can't wait to meet as many of you as possible. Join me as I make my way across America with Chevron to get the word out about its game-changing heavy-duty diesel engine oil, Dello 400, with Isison Advanced Technology. We'll see you out there on the road all summer long with Chevron, Dello, and Love's. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a new seed treatment technology controls nematodes before they attack. Introducing Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. 
Take back your bushels with Nema Strike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. So far, looking behind the machine, I'm thoroughly impressed with them. Compared to the older concaves we were running, we were finding about 40 grains, and we put these new ones in it, and it's hard to find one. After the break, I found out about these concaves. While we were down, we put these concaves in, and it was like a different machine. I'd say we probably saved three to five bushels to the acre. I probably tripled my money just by putting these in. And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Dave, this corn has some noticeable differences. Tell us what's going on here. Well, I know AgriLiquid had helped me out a lot last year, but I've been using my old fertilizer program for a long time. So I decided to do a comparison, AgriLiquid versus a conventional program. So far, the differences are pretty obvious. Looks clear to me. Absolutely. AgriLiquid is going to take the championship here. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Depending on where you are in the country, corn harvest may be done or it may be right around the corner. If you still have corn to harvest, I'll give you one assignment to run out to the field and check in today's Iron Talk. Getting your planter set just right and seeing each plant emerge at about the same time definitely sets you up for higher yields. At the Ag PhD Field Day this summer, almost every one of the corn yield champs from across the country we had speaking made this point over and over again, crediting even emergence as a key to their success. Spacing, basically avoiding doubles and triples, as well as how even your emergence was, will still be evident in your fields right now. I encourage you, get out to your fields and check it out. Look at the consistency of your stand and the consistency of the size of the ears and ear placement. When you see those smaller ears, there's a great chance that it stems back to uneven emergence and an error made by you or your planter this spring. The same could be said about uneven height right now. You can trace it back to a planter problem. This means you've got some work ahead of you before planting your next crop. Fixing problems on your planter is a job that will pay you back thousands of dollars for the few hours of work that it takes this fall and winter to get it set up just right. So get out, walk your cornfields right now before harvest if possible, look for unevenness, and address it with your residue management system this fall and your planter set up in operation going into the spring. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all around grain handling solution. Our conveyor based system uses an 18 inch belt in a 10 inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Well, that's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. It's on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. There are as many living things in a handful of soil as there are people on planet Earth. But what do they do, and how do farmers work with them to raise successful crops? Beneficial bacteria, fungi, and other microbial creatures are being used in the production of nearly every crop. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.